Hi guys, I've felt with this Muslim apology suwa multiple times and I have exposed his ignorance and his attempts at sounding as though he has some knowledge in several branches of science, in philosophy and political ideologies. And for some reason this does not stop him from spreading his deceit in order to feed his ego and get Muslims and non-Muslims alike to think that there is substance behind his nonsense. There is not. In a video that was published end of July 2020, he shows what seems to be a previous appearance of his in London Speaker's Corner. The video is called Quran and Science Discussion at Speaker's Corner. It's almost 36 minutes in length and shows him talking down at some visitors. Now, I will take some of the claims made in the video and check whether they represent reality and are correct. Now, it seems he's been on a rant for some time already and we're joining after he's already riled himself up and got the adrenaline flowing. And it, his first point is already an indication of the level of childishness of what tortures his audience with. I know I wish I could start differently, but unfortunately, it's not the case. He claims that this, he, he does this all the time and he doesn't stop. He, he, he says the scientific method was developed by Muslims, which of course is false. And then asks how many founders of a scientific branch were a theists. How many of the founders of these scientists of these fields were atheists? Now, first off, there is no such thing as a founder of inventor or something of biology or chemistry or something like this. <laughs> There's just people who were noticed and documented things first or more thoroughly or whatever. And second, it is irrelevant since they did not act as clergy but scientists, i.e. in the search of knowledge regarding natural phenomena. And third, in the past almost everybody was expected to have some sort of God regardless of whether they believed it or not. <laughs> and I just noticed this. Try and ignore the voice box of Jay Smith in the background and the crescendo of Hatun, who are preaching away somewhere there, nearby actually. Anyway, Subwa looks incredibly pleased with himself, as though he has made a profound discovery. He now builds up his next platform, the word assumption. He loves this. Now, Muslim apologists in general, they love dragging not believing gods or goddesses exist into an area that is similar to believing gods or goddesses exist, even if this is nonsensical. Since Islam is built on dozens if not hundreds of assumptions, he thinks this also applies elsewhere. And if people criticize Islam, he can use this to criticize all non-Islam, especially science even though this is absurd. He addresses a strawman where nobody claims that technological progress is automatically good and brings up Nazi Germany as a negative example, <laughs> blissfully unaware that Muslims fought alongside them in Nazi SS divisions. And then challenged by a visitor to produce something positive to have come from Islam in the medical field, Subur is lost and sidesteps, bringing up someone who made drawings of light propagation and a thousand years ago wrote a, yes I admit, a brilliant book called Book of Optics. It was really good. But was he a Muslim? We don't know. And there are no indications that he was. Now Subur makes amazing claims, saying everything scientific can be linked to the Muslim world, where in reality no Muslim has ever discovered or invented anything significant. Well, with the notable exception of a lonesome Nobel laureate in chemistry working in the US over 20 years ago. And today, the OIC countries are hopelessly backward, producing next to no scientific output. And the same visitor now confirms this, saying that when he goes to exhibitions, he comes across multiple Israeli high-tech companies but never one from a Muslim-majority country, and asks why this is. Well, what do you know? Subur has nothing to offer, and runs from the question, leaving it unanswered. He claims, using his usual tactic of pretending he has quotes of academics in his head, 
confronting people with this in a place where they are unable to verify his claims. He claims that the scientific method came from the Muslim world. So the birth of the scientific method came from the Islamic world. Look, there's a historian, uh, David C. Limber. He's not a Muslim. He's a historian of science. And he says the scientific method came from the Muslim world. Did David C. Lindbergh, Hildale, Professor Emeritus of History of Science and Natural Philosophy before 1700, really say this? No. Subo is making it up, as he always does. I fact-checked him numerous times, and he simply fabricates stuff and attaches this to some impressive-sounding academic. In his book, Science in the Middle Ages, Professor Lindbergh writes on page 21, Islam made a wide variety of contributions to the scientific method. And then, on page 47, he writes, In the Renaissance, the discovery of the scientific method. So, he says the opposite of what Subur is claiming he said. Totally dishonest, as usual. Yeah, it goes downhill very quickly. In his despair, he goes into preaching mode, making more false claims regarding the Sora Like It challenge. Childish and totally useless in this environment. He calls the badly written Quran a linguistic miracle. Claims it makes predictions, which it doesn't. <laughs> you read books because it has knowledge about something which you're interested in. You read books because they have knowledge? No. Come on, there are different types of books, okay? You get poetry, thrillers, biographies, fairy tales, fiction, non-fiction, all sorts of books. Like like the Quran, for example, it's just a book full of stories, full of nonsense and, and full of threats without anything that is factually correct. And all of the scientific technology today goes back to the Islamic world, to a man called Hassan ibn Haytham. Okay, this is sheer nonsense. I, I did some intensive research when I was tackling a group in the UK called 1001 Inventions and rebutted their claims. Claims that are exactly the same as what we're hearing from the Sabor guy. Fabrication and wishful thinking. And now, even though he is aware that this is all wrong, it does not stop him from repeating what he knows full well is false. Did al Haytham say he was inspired by the Quran? Well, I looked. All I could find is what several people, like this Muslim called Maud Shukri Hanapi from Malaysia, who writes in his essay, Ibn al Haytham's Scientific Epistemology According to Tasawur al Quran, al Haytham was inspired. But not that al Haytham wrote, I am inspired, which I would find strange anyway, as talking ants or flying donkeys don't really fit in with the scientific method. Now, Subur admits all he's doing is sowing doubt, with any kind of substance, I might add, without offering a coherent alternative, which impresses other uneducated Muslims, but no one else. Being asked whether he believes and agrees with everything in the Quran, he again sidesteps, saying he believes it is the direct word of a god. But that's not answering the question. And then he makes... Well, I, I think it's actually a dangerous and simultaneously disingenuous statement. I agree with everything in the Quran being the direct word of God. And if somebody can show me that there is a mistake I can, in the Quran, I can, I can. or there's something false, I'll change my belief. Yes. Yes. Since he knows there are inconsistencies, contradictions and mistakes in the Quran because I have shown him he must lie. And he does. The discussion gets derailed now before he can come up with his second reason, the one I was actually waiting for. Oh, well, tough luck. Instead, he goes off and says he accepts evolution, but later revises that to exclude humans and then further restricts it that hardly anything of the theory of evolution is left. So why lie in the first place? And ask what exactly his God is and not what it does, he simply babbles. Because everyone's different, has different we believe passion. God is one, so we believe God is unique, he's nothing like a human being, we believe he has no beginning and no end, and we believe that he is independent and everything else is dependent upon him. And he created us with all of our values and all of the world and whole universe, and all of the universe is created to worship God. Okay, God is one. One what? One God? 
So what? What is the significance and why does he come to that conclusion? Using what methodology? But may I offer an answer? The Quran says so. <clears throat> There's nothing like a human being. Well, almost everything in this universe is unlike a human being. No beginning and no end. Well, I can imagine a universe with that quality as well. So no biggie. Independent and everything is dependent on the... No, no, sorry, no. Logic dictates that this creator God is dependent on us, not the other way around. A king without subjects is just a lonely dude. And the same is true for a God. Without human beings who believe it exists, it's nothing special. I mean, come on, people a thousand years ago would have considered me to be a god if I rocked up with a laser pointer for crying out loud. And then, this is, this is quite funny, he says he created us with all our values. Well then, why not leave people be? Why, why not shut up about your petty grievances with the rest of the world? Just shut up and let people be people and stop trying to impose your backward ideology on us. Stop trying to get us to live according to, I don't know, society and moral standards of 7th century Arabia. With his zealous and envious nagging, he's actually managing to bring down Islam in its entirety. The more he makes stupid claims, the more people will check and find that he's lying and deceiving others. And something I call outright fraud which is the intentional deception to secure unfair or unlawful gain or to deprive a victim of a legal right, which is what he's doing. According to Sabur, all of the universe is created by this narcissistic monster so that it worships this creator without questioning the justification of such expectation. And all of the universe is created to worship God. Without being able to point out the flaws and this, this total chaos. I mean, this is something that I would expect to find in a naturalistic creation and formation environment, but not from a perfect creator God who claims to be a stable genius and the best of all creators, again and again. So now, after 25 minutes, we get to where this should have started. The question of how a perfect creator God can demand and expect to be worshipped for this shoddy craftsmanship we see everywhere. Come on, let's be honest. This is a huge, like an immense waste of real estate for some life forms on some remote rock in a very normal and insignificant galaxy somewhere in this universe, which on top of everything else is on collision course with another galaxy, created by a creator who needs to test his creation like any normal human programmer would. Okay, let's face it. Subo is a simpleton, plain and simple. Everything he comes up with points to human origins. Everything. And his statement now... If you had two prime ministers and one said, you can have I want to build a building, yes, the other one says, no, I don't. You'll have chaos. Two prime ministers would argue is exactly that, a human characteristic. Bringing up a variation of the watchmaker argument does not do him any good or attest to any kind of advanced intelligence. Uh, the Islam virus is firmly in control of this brain. And as Subo is being questioned by other visitors in the park, his answers are getting weaker all the time. It seems that, you know, Islam apologists can't handle this kind of environment. They are used to offloading their nonsense in formal debates where they can rant and rave uninterrupted for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. But as soon as they are in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they fail miserably. It becomes apparent now how he is totally off his script and how totally lost he is, searching for words that can get him out of this hole, but it's too deep and too late. I actually felt sorry for him. Well, just for a split millisecond, because he opened his mouth and came up with his next ridiculous claim. Well, the rest of the video is just Subur deflecting and tap dancing, never able to get back on track or to come up with any meaningful point, even though he tries to sound like he's in control, saying, I'm going to ask you a question now, I'm going to ask you a question now. But he's, in, he's messing it up. And the video ends abruptly, mid-sentence. Probably to not embarrass Subur even more. I'm actually surprised you put this up because this is actually like really embarrassing. Oh well. 
It's another lost opportunity to bring some understanding to the park and instead showing how backward Muslim apologists can be and that they don't stand a chance when being confronted by someone who does not believe gods exist and uses rational, logical and critical thinking. Well, thanks for your time and I hope to have you around for the next video. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. But I'd appreciate why you don't like this video or something that I did or said and what I can do to improve. Thank you and bye for now.